Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great platform that I've been using since 2017. You can buy, sell, trade cryptocurrencies, as well as precious metals and equities. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. All right, my friends, first up in the news, SEC Chairman Gary Genser suggests again that proof-of-stake tokens are securities. Genser had previously argued that Ether might be a security after Ethereum's transition to proof-of-stake last year. Folks, we continue to see Gary Genser go after everything in the crypto market, and he wants to put all of it in the securities bucket, with the exception of Bitcoin. That's the only token he said is not a security. He thinks NFTs are securities, stable coins, staking, all that stuff is securities. He wants control. There's a land grab going on here. And of course, this is uh, very confusing because the CFTC chairman is saying Ethereum is not a security and he thinks stable coins are not securities. So it's a mess in the US government right now with regulators. And Gary Genser, as we've talked about, he's fighting on behalf of the incumbents to slow crypto down. He wants to put up as many roadblocks so these big banks and players, financial players can come in and catch up and uh, be able to take over this market. So, folks, nothing is safe. And, you know, XRP holders have been saying this was an attack on crypto since the Ripple lawsuit. People were laughing at us. They didn't want to listen. And look at where we're at right now. So we all got to work together. Uh, as I've been stating for months upon months, you have to contact your representatives, you have to email, you have to tweet, you have to make content. It's not just podcasters like myself. You have to do it, guys. We have social media to our advantage. We have the regulators and politicians on Twitter and these profiles. Make content, tag them, call up your representatives once again, uh, email, do what you need to do, guys, because this is crazy and we need Congress to act. Here's a quote from uh, Gary Genser. Well, actually, let me back up. I'll give you some more context here. Speaking to reporters after a commission vote on Wednesday, Gary Genser said securities laws could be triggered because investors anticipate a return when they purchase tokens underpinned by a proof of stake consensus mechanism. The block first reported the news. Here's a quote. Whatever they're promoting and putting into a protocol and locking up their tokens in a protocol, a protocol that's often a small group of entrepreneurs and developers are developing, I would suggest that each of these token operators seek to come into compliance and the same with intermediaries. Folks, everything is on the table for Gary. So just imagine if you're an Ethereum holder, a Cardano holder, and whatever else proof of stake tokens are out there, and you're just staking, earning your rewards. I do that. That's the way I earn passive income, right? Especially in a bear market when the token prices are not doing anything, I'll lock up my tokens and earn passive income that way. He wants to make that a security. We got to fight, my friends. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping Congress can act because this is getting out of hand. And uh, it doesn't matter what you have, what you're holding. It's, he's he's not impartial to it, with the exception of Bitcoin, of course. And even Ethereum, which uh, got a free pass under Bill Hammond and Jay Clayton, uh, Gary's predecessors, uh, you know, saying it's not a security. Now, Gary, he refuses to say it's <laughs> not a security. So everybody, Ethereum holders, Cardano holders, XRP, we all have to come together and fight. This is really crazy. And speaking of fight, uh, we know about the Operation Choke Point and the, the attempt to debank crypto companies, right? We saw Elizabeth Warren and these folks target Signature Bank. And then, you know, there was other problems happening with bonds and interest rates, which helped these banks to collapse. But the whole domino effect started with Elizabeth Warren contributing to a bank run with Signature Bank and so forth. Well, uh, here the FDIC was trying to block some things. And let me give you the headline. Signature Bank's prospective buyers must agree to give up all crypto business. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corp has reportedly asked banks interested in acquiring the shuttered New York institution to submit bids by Friday. So they were trying to, once again, stop crypto in any way and fashion. But 
because of pressure being put on by industry advocates and even members of Congress, like Tom Emmer went on Fox Business today and he was talking about it. He said, it's clear the Biden administration is weaponizing market chaos to kill crypto. This is why I sent an investigative letter to the FDIC chairman Grunberg uh, seeking additional information yesterday. So uh, Congressman Emmer, shout out to him. I've had him on the podcast a few times doing great work here. We got to put the pressure, right? Expose them. And then guess what? All of a sudden, we just got a report about three o'clock today uh, that the FDIC would not require the divestment of crypto activities in the sale of signature. Gee, I wonder why they backtrack so quickly, right? And here's another uh, example of the pressure. Shout out to Jake Traversky and the folks at the Blockchain Association. What they did today was sent a FOIA request to the Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC demanding information about the unlawful debanking of crypto companies. He said, we are also collecting evidence of debanking. Share your story with us. He goes into a very long thread. I'm not going to read through the entire thing. You guys can go read it, but I'll read the second thread here to give you a sense of you know how they're looking at this. There are troubling reports of crypto companies having their bank accounts closed, often with no notice and no explanation. They've struggled to open new accounts too. This is this disturbing trend suggests that regulators are trying to cut crypto entirely out of the banking system. You see the fight we're facing here, my friends. You see the battle. This is our all at war. And again, we are in the then they fight you phase. Remember, first they ignore you. Then they laugh at you, then they fight you, but then you win. So it's going to be painful, my friends. Um, you know, this year I think it's going to be really tough for crypto companies. That does not mean crypto's dead. Does not that does not mean crypto is not going to get adopted. It will, but all of this is to slow it down and allow the Fed and the other banking incumbents and financial institutions to catch up and to take control. That is what's happening here. So really crazy stuff, right? But at least the, you see what the pressure does, right? The FDIC backtracked here. And if we drum up enough to noise, guys, make content. Once again, call your representatives, tweet. You have to do it if you're a crypto holder. It's, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. Just some time, right? And just get your voice out there. It's important, guys. Um, and we, we know other crypto companies like Coinbase are launching initiatives. You know, put your names on the list, give your signature, whatever you need to do. We got to fight. Uh, Stuart Alderati weighed in on this, and he's the general counsel at Ripple. He said, government action that has the consequence of depriving legitimate businesses their rights to bank accounts is a violation of constitutional due process. Community Financial Services Association of America versus FDIC, Federal Reserve, OCC, District of DC 2015. So we got uh, some legal precedents here where we can use some of the, the past things that government has tried to do to fight back. And uh, I'm glad, you know, members, some members of Congress like Tom Emmer, I'm glad members of, uh, you know, the Blockchain Association and industry advocacy groups are fighting back and they're doing their work here, guys. So, uh, but I need all of you who are listening, guys, to uh, this is a call to action. Once again, put out content, email, call, uh, tweet, do what you got to do, right? In in whatever little way, it will make an impact and tag those representatives and tag all the people. They're all on Twitter. It's We've never been able to do this. In the past, we'd have to organize and go, you know, uh, picket and mar march outside, uh, the, I don't know, the Federal Reserve or uh, the White House, whatever it may be. But we can do it simply from our phones and our computers and so forth and from our homes, guys. So uh, please, please, uh, we, we got to fight here. Now, now here's an example of how the big players are just waiting for their chance to scoop up and, and launch their services, right? Once again, this is not to kill crypto. Fidelity Crypto quietly went live, giving millions of retail customers access to Bitcoin and Ethereum. So in the face of all this battle and back and forth and, and so forth, Fidelity's like, uh, yeah, we're going to launch. We're going to launch our service. Why? Because they know crypto is here to stay. It's the future. So the firm's retail product was previously available to users only via waitlist. All waitlist users now have access. Bitcoin and Ethereum transactions on the app are commission-free. Fidelity digital assets will collect a spread of no more than 1%. 
So they would be able to launch other altcoins, but they are, of course, worried about the SEC. So this is why uh, we need Congress to act and the SEC has to do their job. But Gary Genser working on behalf of the incumbents right now. Uh, here's another example of incumbents just waiting for their chance to take over. BlackRock CEO touts tokenization, warns US lagging in innovation, underlying tech technologies in the digital asset space could have exciting applications for the asset management is, uh, industry, according to BlackRock's Larry Fink. So they're looking to tokenize. We know BlackRock partnered with Coinbase to launch crypto trading. Uh, they also created a BlackRock, uh, excuse me, a Bitcoin trust last year. So they're all in on crypto. And then uh, Larry Fink, he's been talking a lot about tokenization because he sees uh, the possibility here, tokenizing different assets on the blockchain will be a game changer. 24-7 trading, global trading, all these things, instant settlement and all that. Um, here's some more details. Uh, BlackRock Chief Larry Fink highlighted the financial headway taking place in some countries other than the US, which appears to be fa or falling behind in comparison. In an annual letter to investors published Wednesday, Fink wrote about rising interest in the digital asset space over the past year, even though bankrupt crypto exchange FTX really captured the spotlight. He called a to attention or a called attention to faster and more efficient payments in India, Brazil, and parts of Africa. India, India's United Payments Interface, uh, a type of instant real-time payment system, has become a roaring success, success as it, it is now one of the most widely used forms of payment in the country. A similar system called PIX has evolved uh, the way locals pay. He said, by contrast, many developed markets, including the U.S., are lagging behind in innovation, leaving the cost of payments much higher, he said. So he highlighted tokenization and, and you know some of the things he's mentioned um, just recently. So, guys, I'm hoping the likes of BlackRock and, and these folks can, um, you know, help also lobby. I know that many of them are, you know, waiting for these assets to, to go down and the companies to fail so they can launch their services, but also to help get crypto regulations because I think that'll help everybody, both the incumbents and and uh, you know the new players and so forth. We just need that clarity. All right, guys, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, I'm I'm really concerned about this proof of stake tokens thing, and we could see a lawsuit pretty soon. I'm uh, you know I don't know what Gary's going to go after next. Ethereum, Cardano. You, you, nobody's safe right now, uh, with the exception of Bitcoin. So uh, let me know what you guys think. And and this is, once again, why we need Ripple to win um, as well. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.